How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm gonna to talk about my Streamline monthly expenses. Now on this channel, I talk about a lot of tips and tricks and these are a direct reflection of what I actually do myself. Now today I'm gonna to go over a lot of my monthly recurring expenses. Hopefully you looking at my personal expenses, you know, you can kind of gleam something away from this and be able to apply it to your own expenses as well. First of all, I decided to omit rent or mortgage because this is so different from person to person depending on your living situation and where you're living even. Uh, you could have roommates or you could be uh, renting a house or you can be having mortgage. So I left this out completely and this video is more intended for you to uh, sort of compare each bill and look at how much you're paying compared to what I'm paying per person. Now I pay this amount for myself and maybe you might have an economy of scale thing going on if you have multiple roommates. Generally I pay these bills, uh, these are under my name so there's gonna be a little bit of overhead on these things. First of all my water bill is $28, pretty typical. Um, I don't use a lot of water, um, I don't normally take baths. Sometimes water has these outside line insurance. I've gotten a few flyers for these and I never bought them but in fact my outside line actually broke about a couple of years back and you know all of a sudden all this water started spewing outside neighbors were like going crazy they're like oh my gosh what's going on you know knocking you know trying to pound down the door or something so what I did was you know I just turned off the water and I looked at what's wrong dug a hole around that area and I went and fixed it myself so that whole ordeal cost me you know a couple of hours and about 20 30 dollars worth of repair uh, costs. Generally, if you don't buy insurance, you gotta be sort of like a handy do-it-yourself type. So in this sense, I'm able to save a lot of money not buying this outside line uh, water mains insurance thing. My trash is $16.56. Now, my trash bill before this was about $30 a month or so you pay uh, every three months. So it's about $90 every three months. I was able to reduce this because I essentially don't use a regular trash can now. I use these overage bags and most of my trash actually goes into the compostable bins and I produce so little actual trash that goes into the landfill that I don't really need a trash bin anymore. Gas and electric is pretty typical. I spend about $50 every single month and in order to get it this low, $50, this is average. So um, during the winter months, it might peak to about $90, but on the summer months, it might be only like $25, $30 even. So what I normally do with this is you try to get your normal electric usage really, really low. I use a kilowatt to do this. You plug your uh, whatever that you use into the kilowatt to try to measure how much vampire power it's actually using and if you see it use a lot and you'd be surprised if you get one of these things i'll leave a link down in the video description below if you're interested in getting the same one i have sometimes certain things consume a lot of electricity even though you think it doesn't for example one of my findings is an old school alarm clock those consume i don't know several watts seven watts or something uh, just constantly every single hour. Another high usage is a cordless phone that uses a lot too. So it really depends on your device. So it's really good to get one of those, just plug everything that you've got into that and just monitor a little bit. And then you can, you know, make an informed decision. I'm not saying, you know, unplug everything because sometimes you might really want to use something. It might be too much of a hassle. For example, a microwave, you know, you don't want to plug it in every single time. You might be able to, you know, put it on a switch or something, but you gotta weigh the convenience factor versus how much it's actually saving. A cell phone, I use a Freedom Pop phone, which is $0 a month. And over the last year I paid about $10. So it's not even $1 a month. So I just kind of put it at zero because it's so infrequent. Landline, I don't have a landline. Cable, I don't have cable. Movie theater subscription service. I don't go watch movies enough in the theaters to get a subscription service, so I don't have one of those. Streaming movie service, so I don't even watch that. Um, I'm pretty busy as it is producing these videos, doing reading, and I have some eBooks I need to read. So, you know, my time is taking up um, enough so that I don't actually need to watch uh, streaming movies. And actually, whenever I go travel, I kind of prefer not having watched a lot of movies because once I jump on the plane, I'll be like, whoa, this is like Candyland, right? There's like a dozen movies I can watch to the destination and coming back. 
when I used to watch more movies, um, I would have seen maybe half of them and then uh, going to my destination. Yeah, I'll be great and all, but coming back, I'll be like, oh my gosh, there's nothing to watch. I'm so bored. So in a sense, not watching movies is great for uh, me doing traveling because then I can save all my movie watching when I'm on the plane. Cloud music service. Now, some people will subscribe to these things. I, I, I don't see the point. Um, if I were to, you know, really like certain music, I would just buy, you know, buy it somewhere on iTunes and then I'll have the music itself and I can listen to it as many times as I want, uh, rather than get like an all you can listen to thing. You know, I just don't see the point in a music subscription service for myself. Cloud storage subscription, all these things that are subscription based, I just get like, you know, a little bit antsy because especially things that locks you in. Um, for a cloud subscription storage, you uh, load up all this data on the cloud, you have to pay monthly and all of a sudden, hey, you know, if you one day you don't want this cloud subscription service, you want to load it all, you all of a sudden need to buy a really big hard drive, download it all and stick it on there. So there's like a sticky issue here. Once you're embedded in this system, you know, you kind of tend to want to uh, keep on paying the subscription service. So be very wary of uh, these subscription services. Extended warranties for electronics. I just personally don't get it. I don't remember, actually I've never gotten an extended warranty for anything, even for big screen TVs, uh, you know, big expensive cameras, all these things, I never get it. I, 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 I've never had a problem with it. And sometimes even if I do, I tend to try to fix it myself somehow. For example, I talked about me having a phone over here. My battery went dead. You know, I guess people could buy, you know, warranties for these things, but this is a really old phone. I just fixed it myself and bam, you know, it's done. Magazines. I don't buy any magazines. Uh, sometimes I still get about two types of subscriptions, uh, engineering subscriptions for free. I don't know why they send it to me still. Um, I don't have to pay anything for that. So zero. Internet is $40. Um, I get a pretty fast internet these days because of YouTube and um, I have to load in 4K definition these days. So, you know, a file for one of these videos, for example, this one might be about four gigabytes large. And uh, well, I have to just pay this $40 these days. So uh, it might go up later on because I might require um, higher and higher data rates. Car insurance, $38. I have a really old car. How old is it? 17 years old. 160,000 miles on, on it. It's a Porsche Boxer 2001. Uh, it's likely so low because I only buy one way insurance these days. If the car, you know, something goes wrong with it, usually I go and fix it myself. If there's body work, I can even do body work by the way. Um, I've done it to uh, an old MR2 before. Eh, I'm not sure if I wanna do that myself these days, so we'll see. I, I don't know what's gonna happen if it breaks. You know, I might just buy a brand new car. Um, you know, if I get in an accident or something in that car, I might buy a new one, I guess. Uh, scooter insurance, $8 uh, a month. Uh, so one year is about $100. Um, I do have a scooter. This is a gasoline powered, I think it's about 150 cc. I kind of forgot. It goes pretty fast, goes like 55 miles an hour. Uh, and uh, I use it sometimes to uh, drop off stuff at the mailbox. Sometimes I use it to uh, go to the BART station or whatnot. It's a fun little thing. I got hooked onto this thing uh, when I went to Taiwan and I drove one and I was hooked because you can sit with your legs like sitting on a couch, okay? It's not uncomfortable like on the typical uh, motorcycle where you have to straddle it. It's very uncomfortable straddling a motorcycle. A scooter, you just kind of sit like this and you just go pa 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 It's fun. Car maintenance, $30. I do my own repairs. In fact, today I did three repairs on my Porsche Boxster. I'll load those videos in my DIY channel uh, pretty soon within the week. Doing your own maintenance, well, it's gonna save you a lot of money and this is one of the ways I save. I, you know, I never done those three types of maintenance before and yet somehow I'm able to complete them. You know, you go on YouTube, look at other people do it and then you do it yourself. Uh, gasoline, now that I'm, you know, semi-retired, doing videos, uh, staying at home most of the time. I don't have to travel, you know, 20, 25 miles every single day. Um, now I only need to fill up maybe once a month rather than 
uh, about three or four times a month. So I only need about $50 worth of gas every single month. Toll, it's only $5. There's occasional needs for me to cross the bridge, usually to go to San Francisco or something uh, in my car. Uh, so, you know, not that much. Groceries has gone down to like $120. I seriously looked at my groceries uh, expenditure on my credit card that I bought only groceries on. And I'm like, wow, it's only $120. And I stocked up on some chicken this month. Usually I just buy a fish. I eat some rice, barley, and then I buy some vegetables. That is my meal right there. It's delicious to me. Um, you can argue that, you know, it's so plain or something, but you know, it's, it's healthy. This even includes the almonds I have to buy uh, for my almond milk tea. Meal subscriptions, obviously, I don't buy those to me. Uh, whenever I looked at them, I calculated those things before. I think it's like six to eight dollars every single little packet of meal and usually you can eat it and that's just one meal and you will have zero left over and to me there's so little food in there and that amount of food should have been worth about a two dollars or something so they're charging you you know of course they got to charge you extra to package it to prepare it you know to put it in the little packets for you so that by the time it gets to your place, you can, you know, they need to earn a profit. To me, I don't think it really saves you time because you can definitely uh, meal plan just as well. And I feel like those meal subscription, when you look at the, uh, the recipes and stuff, by the time you follow it, all of it, it takes, you know, it might even take longer to cook those subscriptions than cooking it, you know, my own way restaurants I still go out eat at restaurants one, once in a while you know just to see friends and stuff I personally won't go oh I'm hungry I'm gonna go out and eat something usually if I'm if I say oh I'm hungry I usually just cook my own or uh, sometimes I had to do these um, eating out things because of YouTube people are donating to me it's like hey you should eat this and this and then I make a video about it uh, health insurance I pay three hundred and ten dollars uh, this is out of my own pocket I have to say I'm paying this out of my HSA account. So this is tax advantage, whatever money I accumulated from my previous employer, I'm pouring that out of that account. I'm like, no, you know what? I wanna spend that money rather than spend my cash right now because that is a health expenditure. But to me, I just like to have things that are accessible rather than things that are locked up. So I prefer to use things locked up. Yes, yes, I know it's like a triple tax advantage thing. Most people rather um, spend their own cash and leave that money in there to uh, compound or whatever. But to me, you know, it's just a, such a small amount that I'd rather just get rid of it and then, you know, worry about um, other things later on just with hard cash. You know, I like that more than, you know, having all these little different, you know, HSA retirement accounts, whatever account all over the place. My traveling is actually all over the place. I added it all up probably about two months or so in the last nine months and it's costed me about a hundred dollars a day. Now this is considered low because I've mainly been using a lot of points for travel. Uh, I've been using a lot of points for um, hotels and things like that. Like when I went for two weeks in Tokyo, that was about $110 a day. Uh, when I went to New York, that's about $100 a day. Clothing, I mostly get them for free. Uh, I have those tricks for how to get free clothes. Uh, I mainly get What's this one from? This one's from Banana Republic. I got this one for free. Mainly through credit card churning. There's various ways that you can do that. Uh, if you're interested in that video, I'll leave it over here. Uh, gadgets, oh my gosh, I spent so much on gadgets. I don't think you can follow this in terms of streamlining your monthly expenses. These are one-off expenses and it tends to be me spending a lot. For example, I bought that music production center thing. It's like this big, I think I spent like, $2,000 for that thing. And then I would buy camera equipment, you know, microphones and stuff, all these things for YouTube. It's hard to say that these things are actually my monthly expenses because I write these expenses off um, under my YouTube channel. So it gets a bit complex. The main takeaway here is to look at what's similar of my expenses as it is to yours. All those things that I personally don't get, look, I'm able to live just fine. Uh, without those. And if you add up all these things outside of housing, outside of travel, outside of these crazy gadgets that I keep on buying, everything else is about $760 a month or so. To me, this is incredibly low. And to other people, it might be, you know, luxurious. So do you just think about all these expenses where you can cut off recurring expenses? Because once you do this, you're essentially able to 
um, increase your cash flow all that much more. This is one of the main reasons on how I'm able to quit my job so soon. And because my burn rate is so low, I can you know feel comfortable that I can make enough uh, to support my daily expenses. So thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in any of those products that I mentioned in this video, check out my affiliate link for Amazon down in the video description below. If you like this video and wanna see more, push that subscribe button over here and ring that bell icon to get notifications. Thanks for watching.